Hi everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel and thanks for tuning in. Breaking news. Did Donald Trump filed another appeal not to testify? Did the White House help plan the January 6th riot? What did Mo Brooks said about Trump? Why did Justice Clarence Thomas didn't recuse himself from Trump's election fraud case? Did the Republican GOP got schooled by the Supreme Court nominee? Is Donald Trump a moron? Why did Trump sued Hillary Clinton? Is there a new report about the Capitol riot? Six teens killed in a highway crash. Why the Manhattan prosecutors resign from the federal investigation into Trump's tax fraud case. Did Ukraine fighters retakes Kyiv Severn? Now for the details first national news. In a recent development, Donald Trump filed an appeal to stall New York Attorney General, Letitia James' deposition. Not so long ago, Judge Arthur Engeron ordered Don Trump and his adult children to sit for a deposition in the civil fraud investigation of Donald Trump and the Trump Organization. According to Judge Engeron, Letitia James had uncovered copious evidence of possible financial fraud in Trump's tax filing. But Trump is trying to appeal the judge decision just to delay the investigation. This is what Trump's wrote in his appeal to the court. Quote, Donald Trump and his adult children argued that if New York Attorney General Letitia James wants their testimony, she should bring them before a state grand jury investigating the Trump Organization, where witnesses receive transactional immunity for their testimony in New York, end quote. Well, let unpack that for a minute. Trump is begging to testify only to a grand jury. Here is the thing, New York State got this weird law, when you testify before a grand jury, you can get full-blown immunity, full transactional immunity and full get out of jail. It is a free card for every crime you tell the grand jury about. But Letitia James fired back at Trump and she wrote this, quote, Donald Trump, Ivanka Trump and Donald Trump Jr. were ordered by a judge to comply with our investigation in Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization's financial dealings, James said, end quote. She also said that despite continuous efforts to impede this investigation, no one can stop our pursuit of justice, no matter how powerful they are, we will continue to follow the facts without fear or favor, she concluded. We now know that this guy, Mark Meadows Donald Trump's former chief of staff helped plan the January 6th insurrection from the White House. Meadows and Ginny Thomas the wife of Supreme Court Justice, Clarence Thomas were texting back and froth about how the whole thing would play out. We will have the full details in the next slide about what they were saying in the 29 text messages. Do you think Donald Trump was unaware of what Mark Meadows was doing? Do you think Meadows got the directive from Trump to plan the riot so he can overturn the 2020 election so Trump can remain in office? This will be the second crime Mark Meadows have committed. The first crime was voting fraud that took place in North Carolina and the second crime is planning of the riot insurrection. Donald Trump's final White House Chief of Staff, turned over late last year to the House Committee examining the January 6th attack were text messages that presented the panel with a political landmine, what to do about Virginia Thomas, wife of Justice Clarence Thomas. The messages showed that Thomas, who goes by Ginny, relentlessly urged Meadows to overturn the 2020 presidential election, which she called a heist, and indicated that she reached out to Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, about Trump's legal efforts to keep power. She even suggested the lawyer who should be put in charge of that effort. According to a New York Times Magazine investigation last month examined the political and personal history of Ginny Thomas and her husband. That included her role in efforts to overturn the election from her perch on the nine-member board of CNP Action, a conservative group that helped advance the Stop the Steal movement, and in mediating between feuding factions of organizers, so that there wouldn't be any division around January 6, as one organizer put it. Ginny Thomas Aslo said this in her text message to Mark Meadows. Quote, help this great president stand firm Mark, you are the leader with him standing for America constitutional governance at the precipice. The majority knows Biden and the left are attempting the greatest height of our history, end quote. Meadows responded by invoking Jesus Christ swearing to execute their plan. This is what he wrote, quote, this is a fight of good versus evil. Evil always looks like the victor until the kings of kings try am sparis, end quote. Ginny replies, thank you, we need that. We believe that was why Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas didn't recuse himself because of his wife's text messages. 
he was the only one won the court who voted to block the January 6 Select Committee from getting Trump's January 6 criminal papers. Four of the GOP senators who questioned Biden's nominee for the Supreme Court Judge Jackson, humiliated themselves and they turned her confirmation hearing as a freak show. They were also very disrespectful to the judge the senators we are talking about are, Lindsey Graham, Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, and Martha Blackburn who are all QAnon conspiracy theorists and Donald Trump cronies. There are two reasons we believe why they were disrespectful to Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. One. She is the first black woman nominated to the Supreme Court in two. It was payback for Brett Kavanaugh. These are the four Republican creepiest senators who questioned the judge about critical race theory, child pornography, and giving short sentencing to sex offenders. We now know that Donald Trump brain is malfunctioning. Why? Well, he was interviewed by a Fox News host recently if climate change was in fact caused by human activity. This was a yes or no simple question. But Trump said this, in my opinion, you have a thing called weather and you go up and you go down. Trump said in the 1920s they talked about global freezing, in other words the global was gonna freeze and they go global warming, then they couldn't use that because the temperature were actually quite cool and many different things so now, they just talk about climate change, the climate always been changing. I really don't understand his theory but I will explain it because Trump doesn't know the difference between climate change and global warming. Now, climate is not weather climate is different from weather, and it seems that many Republicans doesn't know the difference either. Climate is the overall effect on everything over time and weather is what you look outside and see on any given day and weather changes every single day. For example, the Antarctic temperature is 70 degrees right now which is above average. The melting of the Arctic ice sheets are all good examples of a climate change. Now, when we have winter storms that is an example of climate and weather. Trump is a moron he doesn't so we really don't expect him grasp this because this is a man who said climate change was a hoax. In another development Donald Trump sued Hillary Clinton and several other Democrats, alleging they tried to rig the 2016 U.S. presidential election by tying his campaign to Russia. Acting in concert, the defendants maliciously conspired to weave a false narrative that their Republican opponent, Donald J. Trump, was colluding with a hostile foreign sovereignty, the former president alleged in a lawsuit filed in federal court in Florida. Trump, who beat Democratic nominee Clinton in the 2016 presidential election, alleges racketeering and a conspiracy to commit injurious falsehood, among other claims. Trump's allegations in the lawsuit are undermined by a 966-page report issued by a Republican-led U.S. Senate committee in August 2020. The U.S. Congress's probe of the deadly January 6, 2021, assault on the Capitol will reveal new details of that day's events and may recommend new criminal penalties for officials who fail to uphold their duties, Representative Liz Cheney said on Sunday. There will be legislative recommendations and there certainly will be information on the attack the public has not yet heard, Cheney told NBC TV's Meet the Press. Cheney is one of two Republicans on the nine-person U.S. House of Representatives Select Committee that has been holding closed-door sessions over the past several months as it interviews witnesses about events leading up to and during the attack by supporters of then-President Donald Trump. Six teen girls were killed in a Tuesday car crash in Tishomingo, Oklahoma. Police said the Tishomingo High School students died after their car collided with a semi-truck, KFOR-TV reported. The Johnston County Sheriff's Office told KTEN-TV the accident happened at about 12.30 p.m. local time at a three-way intersection. The accident comes as traffic fatalities remain elevated, with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration NHTSA, reporting in late 2021 that the number of traffic deaths in the first six months of that year were 18.4% higher than 2020. The number of projected fatalities hit its highest number in 15 years. Ukraine says it's killed at least six Russian generals, an unusually high total for senior officers. A European diplomat told foreign policy that poor communications were leaving commanders exposed. Russia is sustaining high overall casualties in its invasion of Ukraine. Russian generals are moving into advanced positions leaving them exposed to attacks because they're struggling to get their orders through to conscripts, a European official said. According to Ukrainian forces, they have killed at least six Russian generals so far. Such a toll is unusually high for such senior officers.
the Russian military is using conscripts alongside its regular military in the invasion of Ukraine, despite having promised that it would not. Experts have said conscripted troops are often poorly trained and have low morale. They're struggling on the front line to get their orders through, the European diplomat said. They're having to go to the front line to make things happen, which is putting them at much greater risk than you would normally see. We now know that about 20% of Russia's top commanders in Ukraine had been killed in the conflict, reducing its military effectiveness and stalling its advance. T. U.S. officials believe that about 7,000 Russian troops have been killed in the fighting so far. On Monday, a Russian tabloid reported, citing the country's defense ministry, that the death toll was higher than 9,000, but it subsequently retracted the claim. Russia's forces carrying out the invasion of Ukraine are reportedly experiencing problems when it comes to communications. Military personnel, including soldiers and commanders, have on some occasions utilized commercial cell phones and other unsecure channels to speak with one another. If you like this video please subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.